We know that air masses do not stay in one place, but they move. Sometimes they will linger, like the summer of 2007 along the east coast, we had a warm core stagnating anticyclone. But for the most part, air tends to move. Now what happens when air is moving and it interacts with a mountain? You know, there's a mountain range, for example, being in the way of air that's trying to move in that direction. Naturally, you have air behind it also that's going to be pushing it forward, so this has to move out of the way. And the only way it can move is up. Now, as air rises in the troposphere, it tends to cool because it gets less dense. And cold air holds less moisture than warm air, so the moisture contained can start to condense and form clouds. And then when it goes to the other side of the mountain, it can descend once again, and then the clouds dissipate. But the energy of going up over the hill and then back down creates a type of like bounce in the air current. Sort of like a bouncy ball, you know, you drop the ball, it bounces off the ground and rises up, bounces, rises up, and then eventually it doesn't bounce as high and then it eventually just stays flat on the ground. Well, the same thing happens with, with air currents when they move over mountains. So here you have an air current that underwent orographic uplift. So then it descends, the clouds go away, but then it wants to go back up and clouds form. Then it wants to go back down and clouds dissipate and then back up and clouds form. So now if you look from a satellite down to the earth, here you have the mountain range. And you will have clouds, then no clouds, then another band of clouds, and then no clouds, then another band of clouds, etc. Now naturally, a lot of times when the first clouds form as it goes up the mountain, you tend to have rain. And then this side would be the rain side, and that would be known as the rain shadow. And that's why the Pacific Northwest has you know, you know, some nice rainforests, whereas east of the Rockies, you end up having the Great Plains with less precipitation. And the same thing holds true all over the world. In Lebanon, for example, I'm going to use green to depict the nice pine and cedar covered peaks of Lebanon. You have, you, you know, you have the mountains rising off the sea, then you have the Bekaa Plateau, and then the anti-Lebanon mountains. And to the west, you have the Mediterranean Sea. And to the east, you have the Syrian desert. So what happens is moisture coming off the sea rises when it hits the Lebanon mountain range. And you have the nice snow-capped peaks. And then you have the Bekaa Plateau and then the anti-Lebanon mountains. So here you have more moisture, especially in the wintertime it can rain a lot. And then you have a nice fertile plain fed by 13 major rivers. And with a second mountain range, it gets really dry over here that very little clouds you know, tend to form and you have a nice desert. So Lebanon is a water-rich um, region in an area that's you know, surrounded by water desolate areas. And this is what happens when air currents interact with mountain ranges.